gamers today we're going to be discussing why does an hre fight in feudal and this is part of the like the mini series i'm not going to call it series but it, it's kind of like a thing that i want to try and see if you guys enjoy it and if you like it so i saw this comment when i was watching egc tournament egc tournament and someone just said in one of the hre games why doesn't hre ever fight in um in feudal age like other civs basically so I was like, you know what, I could make a video out of that. And then I thought about, I have some more ideas regarding that. Like I wanna make a video, when is the right time to get eco upgrades? When is the right time to get military upgrades? So I'll be making those videos um, as well. But now let's stick to the topic. Why doesn't HRA fight in feudal? So I'm gonna start with the with the age up and kind of talk about like civ bonuses, why HRA plays like that and why other civs kind of don't so for example if you take a, a, a sieve like english they can kind of play both right they, they can go castle but they can also stay in feudal it kind of works both ways you have sieves like that in the game uh you have sieves like china where you can rush castle you can stay in feudal or you can go to tc right throughout aoe 4 some sieves are played certain when some are not so for example when you play rus versus french that matchup in general rus wants to stay in feudal and french can stay in feudal but if french gets to castle they're gonna be ahead so because of that when you play french versus rus at the top level whenever there's like downtime french tries to sneak in a castle and rus wants to avoid that they don't want to fight there now why is that because rus usually uh, in other matchups they kind of don't mind staying in in feudal forever or even going to castle so why is that well that comes from how the matchup works so roots versus french uh usually ends up with both players going both spearmen and knights and you just kind of try to like kill each other's workers the whole game so if you're playing uh french you try to snipe the workers from roots if you play a roots you try to snipe workers from French with knights, and you kind of try to wear wear each other down. And eventually, if you deny opponents food, you have more knights and you win. And you have some spearmen to support that, right? That's how the match plays out in feudal. So why is it different in castle? Well, the reason why it's different in castle is because French gets access to Royal Institute, which uh, gives you royal bloodlines which severely increases the hp of your knights compared to the roost knights even though they have hp upgrade it's a lot less it's 30 compared to 80. so if the game is standard from both sides and they both have knights and french ages up and roost ages up french gets royal bloodlines their army is just massively stronger in a straight up fight their knights can tank more they can do more damage in the fights because they stay alive longer so Rus in that matchup wants to keep the French in H2 for as long as possible, or at least has an advantage to where even if French ages up, Rus has more units in castle. So why am I telling you this, even though this is a nature video? Well, the reason I'm telling you this is it works the same way for HRE. So I just gave you an example from another Civ, another matchup, and um, HRE works the same way. So why doesn't HRE want to fight in Feudal? Now, HRE is not a bad Civ in Feudal. It doesn't have some of the other bonuses that other Civs have, but it's not impossible to fight in Feudal. Um, you can go Akin Chapel or Mine Work, and you can try to, you know, get map control uh, as much as you can, deny opponent, and just play a regular game. The main reason why HRE doesn't fight in Feudal is because of Akin Chapel, or mine work if you go mine work for example let's say i'm playing it doesn't matter what matchup i'm playing really um whatever matchup i'm playing if i go mine work and i get my upgrades super fast that's really good they're cheaper the upgrades uh you know you research them faster what is the exact numbers 40 percent reduced cost 40 percent faster research that's great right i get all my upgrades and we're fighting and i have an advantage for about two three minutes and then opponent makes a blacksmith and they get their own upgrades and then I basically don't have a landmark anymore. So now I am playing an HRE with a prelate. And if I want to make another prelate, I will lose a villager. And then the opponent's sieve has, you know, unique units like longbows, Zuginu, 
Uh, maybe they have passive gold income from Rus cabins. They have Kremlin. If you are facing against Delhi, all their stuff is free. So yeah, they get their stuff later, but all their stuff is free. So they will have more units. Uh, if you're playing against Abbasid, they're going to have more TCs. Uh, usually they get cheaper villager production, faster gathering speed. And the only thing you're you're left with HRE, like what do you have in Feudal? You got your faster upgrades and you have Prelate. Uh, that if you want to make more Prelates, you have to sacrifice villagers. You have uh, uh, an upgrade that increases your infantry movement speed by 10%, which is nice, but every Civ has fighting bonuses or military bonuses as well. Now let's talk about, so the longer you stay in feudal, the whole point is with mind work, you lose value. And eventually once the opponent catches up with military upgrades, you don't have a landmark and you don't have an advantage, uh, like from a Civ point of view, right? Only the opponent does. Now, if you go Ack and Chapel, now let's say we go Chapel right here. Um, this is not the greatest chapel because, you know, if berries were maybe a bit closer, that'd be pretty good. You could put it something like this. Let, let's put it something like this for, for argument's sake, right? So we'll build that. And this will severely boost your income. Now, Atri has the strongest economy out of any sieve with chapel in feudal, especially the moment you hit feudal, right? Because for very obvious reasons. Inspire makes villagers gather 40% faster. If you have like 20 villagers when you enter feudal or in feudal, all of them are gathering 40% faster, which is crazy, right? So you'll often see a tree be able to get a second TC up faster than other sieves, or you know, you could potentially age up fast and so on and so forth. So you might be wondering, why doesn't a tree just fight then? Well, for the simple reason of, of this, whether I put this chapel here or maybe closer here, and I have my sheep, right? Eventually the sheep will run out. So let's say I'm throwing down production buildings. I have a dog underneath. Oh, she just left. Uh, let's say I'm throwing down production buildings and I'm making units immediately. By the time they get to opponent's base, they will also start making units and I'm not gonna be able to kill them or do some severe damage, but I will have units faster. But that is a low amount of units and I wanna actually be able to kill my opponent. At the best, maybe you can deny gold for a bit until they start producing units and they're kind of back in action. So, here I am, you know, getting my sheep, um, gathering super fast, getting the value out of Akin Chapel, you can see right here. Uh, maybe after, I'll uh, run out of sheep, so I'll go in my berries, everything is good, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting all the resources. But, similarly to um, mine work, eventually you will run out of chapel. What I mean by that is this radius that you see here. So let's say I place a lumber camp here. So I will still get, uh, you know, bonus resource gathering. Let's say up until here, that's where my bonus is. I'm gathering 40% faster. After that, it's gone. Okay. After it, it's gone. So what does that mean? That my main advantage of Akin Chapel gathering faster is after, I don't know the exact time, let's say five minutes, is gone. Then the other sieves start having advantage. Now, you do have farms, right? So you can always make that argument that you can make farms and, um, you know, you have farms under chapel, so it's a great food income. Other sieves can do a similar thing. Um, for example, Abbasid can also go early farms, although they don't need to. Um, and English can go early farms, which are also very, very good. Not quite as strong as, as HRE chapel, uh, uh, farms, but they are cheaper, right? So once you run out of resources, you have to go, let's say we want wood right here. So you can go farms, but even with HRE chapel, it is always more efficient and better to go on deer or boar. So if you're playing against a French opponent, for example, or Rus, which are um, very strong saves against HRE, and the reason why they're very strong is they're able to push you off these resources so you can't get them, right? And if you can't get them and you are making farms, while well, farms are great income, if you transition to farm super early, you're also losing on a lot of potential army. So if you are building farms and your opponent is building units, you're quickly going to be kind of stuck in your base. And the more lumber you gather, 
the wood line gets depleted, there's more place for you to get harassed. So, is HRE viable to be played in Feudal? Yeah, you can play it, right? It doesn't mean that you cannot win. We've seen it in top level play, people are experimenting with it. I think it is possible and it is viable that you can do it and you can play it. But the reason why you don't play it is the same reason why French doesn't rush castle, right? Why do we never see French go one TC castle? Why would you? Right? You have knights in feudal. You have um, access to boar and deer very early because you are the one that's bullying your opponents. So they can't really harass you. You're, you're the aggressor. You're harassing them. So you always have access to deer. You always have access to boar. Most of the time you can take opponent's boar. So it doesn't make any sense to go castle, right? 1TC castle. Why would you? What are you getting out of it? You're, you're getting stronger knights, but so does every Civ. So there is no point, right? Well, HRE is, is, is the same. Um, why would you... The way that top pros are thinking, right? And the main reason why HRE... Uh, players don't stay feudal for too long or at least your your uh, Kind of goal is to get to castle. Maybe you don't rush it with zero units I'm not saying that you should rush it with zero units But I'm saying that why do h3 players try to get away from feudal is because you lose advantages over time But also the strongest point of your sieve just like French is in feudal Your strongest point of the sieve is castle and later on Imperial. So if you picked HRE it's kind of doing like the opposite of, of what's supposed to be done with the sieve uh, and not playing to your strengths and, adv and, and, and ad advantages of your sieve and your bonuses, right? A lot of the bonuses for HRE are in Castle Age, right? The, the stronger men at arms with maces, uh, Cathedral for extra passive gold. You get more uh, um, economic upgrades which are gonna boost your your farms even more around the chapel when you eventually get them uh, it's also a lot riskier for you to go out on the map as HRE compared to let's say Rus or um, or French to get the deer out on the map you don't have a, a, as much def, uh, defensive possibilities as some of the other civs do and you also don't have as many aggressive possibilities as French or Rus or, or English so that kind of style, while possible with HRE, is not better than some of the other civs. So usually what you see with HRE is you make units, some kind of defense, maybe a little bit of harassment, and you try to kind of like sneak in castle and then continue the gameplay in the same way that it was just played, except you're in an age up. And the reason why that's usually more possible with HRE than the other civs is because of chapel. Because if you're stuck fighting in feudal, for a while and you run out of sheep and you run out of berries and you run out of wood line then you're just a normal sieve that might have some farms but then it becomes a lot harder for you to sneak in a, a fast castle at that point because the main bonus for your sieve in feudal has been depleted and once you reach castle like i said you get a, a cathedral uh you have uh, maces you get access to knights so you can actually harass your opponent uh, if you went mine work, for example, mine work into some kind of fighting into Castle Rush, your landmark that was now useless after getting initial upgrades and your opponent getting upgrades, once you reach Castle, you can immediately get that kind of advantage over your opponent again by getting all the upgrades again. So you kind of get the value of the landmark um, as you're aging up. And you can also go, you know, mine work into Cathedral and get the relics, right? Um, so from a like a pro player point of view this is kind of why hre plays the way it plays um now we have seen the kind of rise i mean for the past couple of months rise of 2tc uh hre where you just go fast second tc you you, you know you put it on deer and you kind of fight a little bit and go castle but people have figured out a lot more aggressive plays to play against hre i feel like where people realize that French and Rus, for example, need a little bit of a setup time, like to put their second TC down, to start getting upgrades and an attack. So if you go to TC as HRE, it's viable, it's, it's good, it's still good. But if you do put your second TC, you're actually extending the feudal, 
right? You're actually saying, okay, yeah, I'll go to TC as well. And if the opponent goes all out to attack, you have to make army to defend. And then they're kind of, they get you stuck in the feudal age. And then it becomes a lot harder to age up. So now, instead of them having to wait for you to deplete your sheep right here, or berries, the only thing they gotta wait is for you to deplete your deer here, combined with this, and then you're in the same pickle that you were, uh, uh, you know, before. You have 2TC, you have chapel, you might have some farms, but once the food runs out, the opponent is still perma-producing uh, units the whole time because they have faster gathering from the deer. They got two deer packs. Maybe they'll even take your deer pack, one of them. They take your boar and they take their boar. So even though you have farms and they're cool, they're more income, the deer and uh, the boar early are way, way, way better. Not to mention, if you play against civ like French, for example, uh, if you're both on 2TC, they are still getting ahead in villagers because they have faster worker production. And by extending your feudal age, you are becoming uh, less likely and it just becomes harder to kind of sneak in that castle and continue from then on because there might be already ramps coming and destroying your TC or something. And at that point, even if you get a castle, uh, an opponent has more units you won't be able to get relics either so it just kind of becomes this whole whole deal usually the the plan with a train general is for you to try to hit castle as fast as possible while having enough units to not take damage or, or defend or maybe harass a little bit and try to use the initial sheep and and berries and some of the farms that you have to not only reach castle but be able to push your opponent away with the stronger units so you can take a couple of relics then they age up, so your economy is weaker, like you have less workers, but then you have Regnet's Cathedral and some relics, so then kind of the game goes uh, back and forth. Uh, are you going to go into solutions to get out of Feudal? I mean, there's no... I, I can't tell you, uh, make a tower, three archers, and five spearmen. It depends a lot on what your opponent is doing. It depends a lot on the spawn. It depends a lot on how your opponent plays, right? Uh, what opponent's Civ is. Like, for example, if you play against China and he's going 2TC uh, Song Dynasty, you probably can just get get to Castle with zero units. Because if China goes 2TC, you can get to Castle with zero units. You can just immediately rush it. Like, almost no wood, nothing. Uh, if you play against French, you're going to need to build Spearmen, right? If the French opens with stables uh, from the landmark, uh, and then Arch range immediately... Not only you have to build barracks immediately, you also need to build stables for the archers. But if French makes one knight and stops mining gold and goes to get stone, you can also get away with one barracks, a couple of spearmen, and then you can either age up or make some horsemen to harass. So uh, that's why I can't like just say like, oh, just do this and you'll be fine. It depends a lot on what your opponent is doing, which is why scouting is very, very important. And um, once you are in castle... As HRE, let's say you get five relics. You have two options, which is great. The more relics you have, the, the more options kind of open up. But if you, let's say, somehow have five relics with Cathedral, um, you can, if you have some farm set up, you can age up to Imperial with Swabia so quickly. Similarly to how you age up from Feudal to Castle, like very, very quickly. And Explosive, you can also do that from Castle to Imperial, if you're safe enough. Or you can actually fight forever in Castle as HRE, which has been kind of becoming more and more popular recently. Because similarly to how you want to stay away from Feudal and other civs want to fight you, in Castle, if you have a lot of passive gold from Cathedral, you can stay in Castle forever because you're getting so much passive gold. And then all you need to do is just keep trading into your opponent until they run out of food or they run out of gold. And then you can just win the game straight up because eventually your opponent will need to transition to farms and when they do they don't have any unit production and you know you're pumping units the whole time because i'm assuming you set up some farms right and you have a lot of passive gold so you can kind of force trades or maybe try to block their gold and stuff like that so that's it uh like i said i saw this question asked pretty often so i figured why not just make a quick video explaining a little bit um why top pro players don't fight in feudal uh too too much now like i said some players do 
Um, so I'm not gonna say it's like not possible or it's not viable. Everything is viable. I think the majority of the pro players yeah. doing this is kind of the reason um, why they're doing it, right? I always like to use the, the the comparison of like why doesn't French rush castle? Because there's not there's not much point. They don't gain too much, and HRE um, doesn't gain too much from standing in um, extended feudal. So again, it's also uh, you know matchup dependent, map dependent. There's a lot of stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope you learned something new. I hope I answered this question. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks so much for watching. Check me out on Twitch, I'm probably live right now. If you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.